Hey Zane fam. So today Sony in their wisdom decided to release a little press clipping going here's the game for next month's PlayStation Plus. And uh, first I thought I'd misread that so I read the article and it said this month's PlayStation Plus uh, release will be Call of Duty t uh, World War 2. And I'm going where's the second game what's going on and uh, as it turns out they've only released details for one one game on a system that used to give us six titles we now get we're now getting one title occasionally sometimes we get three when they've gotten a bit generous and given us a PlayStation VR title as well but for quite some time now it's just been two PlayStation 4 titles <coughs> which has been like okay so you're prioritizing the money a bit more and getting this PlayStation 4 stuff and hopefully some slightly higher end games we can kind of live for that it's not brilliant but you know it's better than nothing and uh, even though Call of Duty isn't traditionally my jam I might very well give it a go uh, but then of course it set me to thinking what the hell is going to be the other game because some of the articles have said like the, there's going to be further details released which means Sony is trying to completely own the news cycle it's like you know owning the news cycle enough Sony everybody keeps talking about you because you keep not putting out details for PlayStation 5 the amount of guesswork videos online is just nuts I think even my good friend Tobe Gaming is starting to run out of stuff to say. And that guy is rabid for saying stuff about PlayStation 5. It's like um, we're all hanging on going, when are we getting details? When are we going to know something? So yeah, I think this is a bit of a cheap shot when it comes to the news cycle Sony. right? So of course then people start speculating online. I've seen some people going, Ooh, perhaps I'll get Spider-Man and I'm like really <laughs> you think you're getting Spider-Man pal you are living in three land son put it this way right Spider-Man still has a butt ton of sales in it it seriously has I mean look how popular that game has been then you add into the fact that like in about what six months or so you know give or take because we don't know entirely there will be PlayStation 5 once PlayStation 5 has been out a little bit, give it like a couple of months, maybe six months, who knows, you will see PlayStation 4 drop in price significantly. They'll easily drop 100 quid off it, maybe 80 quid, right? But there will be a significant drop in its price. And that will be to facilitate all the Johnny Come Littleys, all of those people that go, oh, I like, I like gaming, but it's a bit expensive. I always wait to when the systems are about to be sur I've been surpassed by the next gen and then I get the last gen and I'll sop up all of the software that's going. I mean, we've seen it with PlayStation 2 came out, PlayStation 1 sales were still strong. When PlayStation 3 came out, PlayStation 2 sales were still strong. I mean, that's why the PlayStation 2 is the best selling console of all time. Hello? <laughs> Only following that of course is the Wii well Wii is its own story but the fact of the matter is right when consoles go away the one that was left behind the last gen it sells because they drop the price and then all the software is cheaper for it and people go buying it and Sony are kind of counting on that I think because of the backwards compatibility that will be there for at least PlayStation 4 so then people can play playing on PlayStation 4 with multiplayer games and play with people on PlayStation 5 with the same multiplayer games. And thus, you know, have a little bit of a backdoor indoctrination into the next generation. You know, get people wanting it a bit sooner than what they would do. Possibly even, like, getting them to buy it sooner. So, if not Spider-Man, for PlayStation Plus next month. Then what about Grand Theft Auto 5? 
because after all, Grand Theft Auto V is what? How old is that game now? I mean, it came out on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 in 2013. The game is seven years old. And then, of course, not long into this gen, we got the, the refresh on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. And then a little while after that, we got the flip, we got the PC version. So they're always doing it. The only thing they've not done is stick it on the Wii. You know, stick it on the Switch. That's the only thing they've not done is stick it on the Switch. I don't think the Switch can handle it, to be fair. I just hate to see the loading times. I think they're bad now. Oh, God. But here's the thing. Right. Although it's already on Games Pass and you can get it on a couple of the PC marketplaces for nothing, as much as I love Sony and PlayStation, because I, you know, I'm a PlayStation fan, I mean, hello, <laughs> I'm a PlayStation fan, right you know, I'm not a fanboy though, ask anybody that kens me, they'll tell you I'm not a fanboy, I will point it when Sony make a, make a boo-boo, you know, uh, so, I just don't think Sony are clued in enough to the gamer to realise that that would be a great move. You know, because the other two have done it. In fact, anyway, because the other two have done it, I can see Sony going against the grain. Well, that's what Microsoft are. We're not doing that. Yada, yada, yada. <sighs> but here's the thing, right? Rockstar would probably be grand for it. In fact, I reckon the reason Rockstar have let it go free on PC and let it go on for basically free on Xbox is basically because they want to sell more shark cards. Okay? You want to know why Grand Theft Auto is still high in the charts seven years later? The reason for it is this. It's very simple. Alright? People buy... Grand Theft Auto because there's bundle packs that get you a high-end shark card, right? And buying the bundle pack with the shark card is actually cheaper than buying the shark card, the, the, the big shark card that comes with it. I think it's like the Megalodon or something. So you can get the Megalodon shark card and the game for cheaper than you can buy the actual shark card itself. Because they want to keep themselves in that sales because they've made oodles of money. I mean literally millions and millions of pounds or dollars or whatever have been made by Rockstar with Grand Theft Auto V. Not because of the single player mode, because of that multiplayer mode, because of those shark cards, because of the whales going out there and spending the money and teenagers getting hold of mum and dad's credit card and buying shark cards so they can have a gold plated jet and Last honest players out of, off the map with an orbital cannon. That's what's going on. I mean, you have to remember, right? In Grand Theft Auto, you never actually really own much of anything. You own your cars. That's it. You don't own your apartment. You don't own your casino apartment. You don't technically really own your businesses. They're all rented. The mechanic, he's on a salary. The apartment, you rent that. The clothing, yeah, you buy that, but note the prices of something as simple as a t-shirt in Grand Theft Auto. Please. It's a cash cow. Alright? The game has become an unbalanced mess. I mean, you have a flying bike that can annihilate most everything. Okay? You have an armoured car that they put out for the heist missions that they've now taken out for use in heist missions because it makes it too easy. <laughs> I mean, hello? Everything about Grand Theft Auto was a cash cow, so yeah. They would probably quite like it if it came to PlayStation Plus, but I just don't think Sony will do it because Sony, as much as I dig them, are pig-headed, obstinate idiots sometimes. I love you, PlayStation, but... I gotta speak the truth. Sometimes you just do dumb stuff. I mean, hell, you thought iPad was good. <laughs> God, iPad. So the question becomes, and you could have a bash at this, what will be the second game for an Xbox PlayStation Plus? I don't know. 
you probably don't know, but have a guess. Get all typey, typey, typey down below. Tell me what you think. Perhaps you think it'll, I don't know, whatever you think the game could be. But whatever it is, as fanciful as it is, or as logical as it is, give me a reason. You know, give me a sort of like something to hang my hat and go, oh, that's a point. He's on to something. You know, whichever one of you guys might be in, in the comments and going, aye, I think it's this game, and here's my reason why. <laughs> go for it. For my money, what I'd like to see, although I doubt it'll happen because it's not exactly in the zeitgeist, and it'll be a bit out of left field, but uh, sometimes Sony does do left field, so you know, it could happen. Is I'd like to see Tron run R. Yeah, you know, it's not an expensive game, but it's a known quantity. It's connected to a franchise with big, sort of like, a big fan base by now. I mean, I'm a Tron fanboy. That is something I'm a fanboy of, is Tron. I love, I love Tron. And I've got my boy into Tron as well. <laughs> you know, I mean, think of it, you've got the original movie, you've got like the, all the various video games for the years, despite, aside, alongside Tron V, Tron Run R, you've got the Uprising's uh, animated series, you've got, uh, you've got the Evolution movie, it's like a, it's a big property and it's a Disney property so it's like there's always money in Disney so you know it could be Tron R and I would like it to be because I remember playing that demo to death I chuffing loved it and it's not just all running there's light cycle sequences and stuff in it too so it's more varied than you'd think anyway so that's my thoughts you know like I said I'd love to know yours so I'll get out your faces now because I imagine you've got stuff today. So I'll close this room in the way that I always do. So, hashtag support Scottish YouTubers. And of course, as always, aye, no bother. <laughs>